This guitar has lived so many lifetimes, it's almost hard to keep track of them all. My first Jimi Hendrix riff on this junky Telecaster. More glamorous when it was in my pops' hands. That. That's her. Now, it's not a Fender, okay, it's a Fender knockoff, but when it boils down to who built it, it's as close to the real thing as a guitar can get. Last time people got very upset about how I put lemon oil on the body to clean it. It's a Telecaster. They're indestructible. Gotta pop the neck, see if I can find a signature, yada yada yada. Wow. Okay. There's one name that's painted all over this guitar, and that is the name Philip Kubicki Guitar Tech, made in October 1984, baby. And the neck is December 1984. He was a man that worked in the musical instrument industry for 50 years. Unfortunately, he passed in 2013, so rest in peace. But before he did, he left behind a legacy, such as building George Harrison's Rosewood Telecaster. So back in the early 60s, Mr. Philip Kubecki attends Fullerton Junior College in Fullerton, California, the epicenter of Fender guitars. Philip takes a tour of the Fender plant in 1962, briefly mentioning to one of the associates that I like to build acoustic guitars. He's hired on the spot at 19 years old, spends several years apprenticing under Roger Rasmias, the guy who invented the signature look of Rickenbackers. So Philip was working under his wing, and the pair also worked on the very first Rosewood body Telecaster. You could hear that very guitar on Let It Be by the Beatles. My dad has been holding on to this guitar since the 80s. With all this history, anyways, thank goodness for the internet. Damage report! This is Damage Report. You know what Telecasters love to do? Telecaster pit guard specifically is warp over time. It's just bad news overall. So to fix this, I took a heat gun. You could reset the pit guard if you use enough caution had enough weight. It's got the squishy neck position. Pickups are a little microphonic. They're only supposed to be capturing the vibration uh, coming from the strings, but instead it captures the entire sound of the guitars. Uh, I don't recommend doing that. Complete guitars made by Philip Kubecki are hard to find. What I'm looking for is the Philip Kubecki signature on the neck and the body, and I'll also look in the pots. Misty with dirt. That is a treble bleed circuit right there. Now, Philip Kubecki worked closely uh, with Fender, so I'm thinking that this bridge might be an authentic 80s Fender Telecaster bridge. It's got a patent number and everything. I believe the wear on the first few frets is intentional, like someone relic this thing back in the day. And the wood grain, mm, that's immediately a sign of a high-end guitar, other than it being heavy. That's not just an opinion, that's a fact. Heavier guitars are higher quality. A guitar with a unique history, something that was actually built with love and care, a situation that's rare to come by nowadays. What does that mean for me and my pops? More importantly, apparently back in the 80s, Mr. Kubecki was all the rage amongst guitar players. His guitars were on magazines. He was creating priceless instruments as pet projects, which we'll get to in a second. And I specifically found this USA Stratocaster that was built by the Quebecmeister. God, why did I say that? And the wood grain on this thing is nearly identical, and that goes for about $900 just for the neck and the body. My personal favorite, the Stringer. It's a Fender Telecaster made up of 35 different tone woods. It's priceless. You can't put a price on something like this. Ultimately, we're looking at guitars that are in extremely good quality. This thing that's sitting right behind me here has been through hell and back. Gigs, we're talking bars, we're talking being at the hands of a teenager. Although the guitar is in crap condition, the fact that this guitar was built by the hands of a master luthier who's no longer with us, no longer producing products, that's definitely going to have an effect on the price. One thing doesn't match up and it's keeping me up at night. 
what is going on with the headstock here? Who is Philip Keller? Phil Kubecki was always putting vintage parts on his guitars. Out of all the Telecasters I witnessed on the internet, there was not one that had modern tuners. Other than the wacky logo, the tuners as well as the tree strings are modern. See that thing right there? That's a tree string. Now you know. I think it's time to talk to my dad to really get a true story on this guitar. That's me, dad. <laughs> so proud of my boy. Yeah, 85, 86. And I got it at a place called Grand Guitars in Englewood, New Jersey. I never really looked at it like a real guitar until you rediscovered it. It has such a classic early Fender sound to it. Philip Keller from Grand Guitar bought it from Cubic. He came from California. <laughs> I'm ah. sure without a headstock logo, and then they put that on later. The weight was good, and you could see on the back end, because I played all around the country with this guitar, doing a Bruce thing, man. We used to have funny. Were you nervous before you got on stage in front of all those people? Uh, no, you know what? It was not. Let's see the footage real quick? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Hey, guys, with the headband, when Bruce was doing the Born in the USA tour, with the over-exaggerated moves. Yeah, denim, a lot of denim, yeah. headbands. Yeah, Iris Siegel on guitar right there, and Tom Fig on drums. John Siegler on bass. Oh, New Jersey! Look at there's a guitar right there! And the song is New Jersey, gotta give credit, written by Nate Herman from Chicago. There's Arno, man, there's Arno. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And more hair back then, I don't know. <laughs> Arno running with me. Thank you, Grand Guitar. He'll <laughs> be calling me going, yeah, you owe me 30 grand now. Yeah. My dad is such a fan of New Jersey, he's still writing songs about the state today. And that's what I want to present to you right now, featuring the not-so-knockoff Fender-ish Telecaster. Cruising down beside the Jersey 295, meet and greet tonight, I always love working live. Sunset in the pine lines on Route 539. If I said the Jersey Devil's dead, you know I'd be lying. Expressway is the best way to Atlantic City, and I ain't going nowhere. Jersey's home to me. Home to me. For us to talk to diner, right by Route 46. It's where to go to lick your wounds after a night of kicks. Turned by toxic glow on that eternal blue flame. The sights, the sounds, the smell, we're at the top of our game. Heading east, we love the skyline of NYC, but I ain't going nowhere. Jersey's home to me. Home to me. Tax 